as we consider the things, the things of God, things of the kingdom of God. You only have one chance to get a, a familiarity, to gain a familiarity with the things of God. That's yep. your lifetime in the earth. Yep. If you don't get it here, you'll never get it. Right. And you just get the introduction, of course, but it's necessary. Tonight, this is our 25th message in this series. <coughs> We're dealing with the concept of mediation and intercession in the New Covenant. I want to clarify this as much as I'm able because these, these are two different ministries, intercession and mediation. This is the high priesthood of Christ. It's a two-pronged high priestly ministry of Christ. This is what Christ is doing now. Yeah. I, it might surprise you that these days in these days have been kind of a long period, several several decades now. Very little is being said about what Jesus is doing. I will tell you that if Jesus was a doing something, you couldn't be saved. Amen. Your salvation depends Amen. on what Jesus is doing now. Yeah, His death qualified him yes. uh -huh. to do this. <laughs> So let me take a moment to <coughs> define these uh, two words, medi mediator, intercessor, and then to establish why, why they're necessary. A mediator mediates between two parties that are either in conflict or they're in some way they're in disagreement. He's what we call an arbiter. He, he is, his job is to make the one unacceptable person acceptable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he stands as a channel of communication between the two parties. If, if the, in the mediator, there's one party, the superior party, in order for him to communicate with the inferior party, it's got to go through this yeah. mediator. If the inferior party wants to communicate with the superior party, he has to go through the mediator. Mediator is necessary between, in this case, God and man. <coughs> Again, because there's something that's contradictory in these two parties. Intercession is involves an entreaty, speaking to the superior in behalf of the inferior. Intercession is made with God, not with man. He directs a petition toward God for the person he's interceding for. Now, by way of introduction, there's a part of us that cannot enter into the presence of God. Yes. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. All right, that's the, that's the complicated fact. That's, I'm going to establish that that's why you need a mediator. Because you're dwelling in a vessel that's not accepted in heaven. It'll never be accepted in heaven. Your body's got to be changed for you to enter into heaven. Also, <laughs> you have a part of you that's got to be, a part of you that's got to be put off. Amen. Put off the old man which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. See, you've got this. This makes you and God incompatible. The only way you're compatible is because of this mediator who addresses this situation, there's a, there's a part of you that God does not receive. Amen. Oh, would to God that would get across to people? Mm -hmm. Now, salvation includes the power to put that off and crucify the old yes. man. Amen. Salvation includes a remedy for that situation. <laughs> there's a part of you that can't enter, there's a part of you that must be put off must be crucified. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh. But crucified flesh and dead flesh are not synonymous. Jesus died on the cross, but he is very much alive until he did. Until he dismissed his spirit. Well, technically, he died, but technically he dismissed his spirit. But until he did that, he was very much alive. So crucified flesh is still... 
He's still alive. He still has the potential of doing everything it could do before. If you decide to let your flesh loose, it hasn't lost one bit of strength. Even if it's been crucified for 50 years, it will not lose any of its strength. That's the nature of flesh. It's got to be kept on the cross. You've got to deny what it wants. When it cries out for you, you've got to deny it because it doesn't lose. He doesn't just die old age when you crucify him. It's a slow death. <coughs> This is why people must, in, must cleanse themselves. This is 2 Second Corinthians 7, 1. Must cleanse themselves of all filthiness of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. Now, this, is, this has got to be done. I know that a lot of people don't really believe this. They've learned to live with their sin. They've learned to live with it to be lenient. They want us to be lenient with it. They do. Yeah. But this is the mandate from heaven, and this is with the mediator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That has to, you, you've got to get the victory over whatever pulls you down. Yeah. You don't have, you've got the resources to do it. You, I understand you're not doing this on your own, but it has to be done, and the reason it has to be done is why there's a mediator and an intercessor. Yeah. <laughs> now let's establish once again, the need for these ministries, mediate between the parties, intercede, speak for. The need for these ministries. We're in a world that's going to pass away. God's in a domain that is not going to pass away. We've got, we got friction. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Because it does, it has a downward pull to it. You can't live in this world without it draw, trying to draw you down into the quagmire. You can go out and isolate yourself like a hermit someplace, and it'll still, it'll still happen. As long as you're in this temporal domain, it's scheduled for destruction. This is why you need a mediator and need an intercessor. This is why. Amen. You can't handle this thing by yourself. Amen. Even given all things pertaining to life and to godliness, you still can't handle it by yourself. Even being filled with all the fullness of God, you still can't handle it by yourself. Yeah. It's really, salvation is really a hard thing to accomplish. Yeah. We're in the devil's domain. As if it's not enough that we're in the world, this is the devil's domain. Yeah. He's the God of this world. This is where he operates. He doesn't operate in heaven anymore. When the intercessor entered in, the devil was kicked out. Amen. You can't have an accuser and an intercessor occupying the same realm. So when the intercessor entered in, the accuser was cast down and we're in his domain. And all you have to do is forget that. Doesn't take long. You could be on the top of a housetop and see a pretty woman, and before you know it, you're in the devil's domain. You don't know what capacities you have unless you've been come off of a life of deep sin. Then you're then you're actually more vulnerable than anybody else. You've got to cleave to the Lord closer than anybody else because you've got more avenues of approach to him. Devil's domain. <coughs> and you have, as I mentioned, the remnant of your old self. It's, it's kind of, yeah, this is difficult to illustrate. That's why I'm not big on illustrations. They're always so feeble. If you know what yeah. Illustrations are so... <laughs> so feeble you wonder why anybody even uses them but there is a way to describe a remnant of your old nature it's because that little bitty remnant has all the power that the full thing had That's right. See, it, it, it breaks it isn't just that something of you is left what you were is living in the same body with what you are yeah. you, see, you can see that I'm sure this condition requires a mediator and an intercessor. 
we occupy a vile body. As the Philippians 3.20 calls it, 21. Some of the later versions tone it down and say body of our humiliation. Well, what's the body of your humiliation? It's a vile body. <laughs> it's like a dead body. You're dragging around a dead body. Yeah. It's humiliating, but it's a vile body. And you're in it, see? Yeah. You're in this. I'm establishing the need now for a mediator and for an intercessor. <coughs> Do we have a treasure from God? But you've got it in an earthen vessel. It's porous. It leaks. That's why sometimes you forget things you never thought you'd forget about God. They just leak out. You've got to keep your vessel filled at all times. This condition necessitates a mediator and an intercessor. And we have a relentless adversary. He never lets up. <coughs> He's never, Satan is never discouraged. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if you really deal him a devastating blow, it, he just come back right back. That's the right. way he is. That's why Paul said to the Corinthians, I fear lest by any means yeah. Satan deceive you like he did Eve. And she was perfectly innocent. That's right. Eve was morally perfect. Mm -hmm. And a perfect adult morally. Perfect, innocent be better word. She was an in, adult yeah. Innocent adult, yeah. and it only took one encounter. Yeah. 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 That's right. See, I'm showing you why you need an intercessor and a mediator. Yes. None of us have achieved what Eve was when she was tempted. But no, no, but no one has ever duplicated yeah. uh -huh. that circumstance. <laughs> There's never been a morally perfect man or woman ever since Eden. There never has been. They're the only two in the history of the human race. Uh -huh. <coughs> So this calls for a mediator and an intercessor. <coughs> and we're in a realm. There are demons perpetrating false teachings in this domain. Peter talked about it first. Uh, Paul talked about it first. Timothy 4.1. There are doctrines of demons. Teachings. Demons are smarter and stronger mm -hmm. than men. You think you're smart? Demons are smarter than you. Yeah, that's right. You can't meet them on your own, they'll crush you. That's right. They'll trick you, they'll deceive you. Yeah. You're not up to it. You've got to have a mediator. Yeah. And said, well, see, I got the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but you can't quench the Spirit. See, it's, when you have the Holy Spirit, you've got to pay attention to the Holy yeah, Spirit. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need a mediator or intercessor. And we're, we're going to have to pass through death. That's on the horizon. You're going to have to pass through death. And when you do, there'll be no coming back. There'll be no starting over. The state you're in when you die, at least under normal conditions, that's it. Now you've got to arrive safely at the grave, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. When your time comes to die and it's appointed, everyone's going to die. If you don't die the normal death, you'll die a different way. You'll just you're, you'll you'll be changed in the twinkling of an eye. You, this body will be gone, and you'll have a new body. Yeah. I'm saying now this condition you're going to have to pass through death calls for a mediator because this is something with which you cannot contend with natural energy mm -hmm. and natural wisdom. You cannot, there are people make millions of dollars teaching people about death. But no one's ever been able to equip somebody to die intelligently yeah. with, with a hold on eternity. Yeah. Only God can do that. Amen. Amen. That condition requires somebody representing us to God, requires somebody. <coughs> Uh, some name, there's some things we need to have done while we're in the world. And they, they all require a mediator and an intercessor. I'll, I'll name nine of them. You have to be kept. You, that's kept from the devil's clutches. Kept from the devil's delusions. 
kept from demonic doctrines. Somebody's got to keep you. Because your foe is more powerful than you are. That's why you needed a savior. That's why you got to have a mediator. That's why you have to have an intercessor. We are kept by the power of God through faith. <coughs> First Peter 1 Peter 1.5 So that, that condition requires... Listen, God's not going to keep you just because He loves you and knows you. You're talking about a holy God here. You're not talking about like a friend. That's right, yes. God never said he was Abraham's friend. Mm -hmm. He said Abraham was his friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was Abraham. Abraham was his friend. It's what God thought of Abraham, not yeah. what Abraham thought of God. Mm -hmm. Abraham never addressed God as a friend. He, he, That's right. Nobody, nobody can say that to God. Jesus said to his disciples, you're my friends if you do whatever I say. Yeah. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. This condition requires a mediator and an intercessor. You've got to be kept. Yeah. And you've got to be renewed. Your strength has to be refurbished. You don't get like when you're saved, initially saved, you don't receive like a, a lot of strength and it just lasts all your lifetime. Mm -hmm. That's not the way it is. You have to be renewed because you're in a state of growth. You're in a state of movement, moving from one world to another world, right. preparing to disembark from this world and mm -hmm. embark in the other world. See, so you're, this condition requires a mediator mm -hmm. and an intercessor. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. See, this is something that has to go on all the time. Right. All the time this has to go on. You can't depend on your memory. You can't depend on your memory for this to happen. Yeah. God knows it, so he provided a mediator and an intercessor to assure that this process keeps on. Mm -hmm. For one thing, if, you, if people sleep like a third of their life, they're sleeping normally. Mm -hmm. Eight hours. You don't have control of your mind That's right. during that time. Mm -hmm. That's a third of your life in the normal circumstances. You're vulnerable. Yep. Who's keeping you? Well, it's his mediator and the intercessor. You need to be kept. You need to be renewed. You need to be taught. You don't come in fully learned. I've been in Christ now. 71 years. And sometimes it seems like I'm just starting, starting to learn. So we're in this learning mode. We have to be taught. Yeah. If you have been taught by Christ, Ephesians 4.21 says, see, he's the, te he's the teacher. This mediator and intercessor is also a teacher. He takes the things of God and, get, and instructs you about them. Yeah. He instructs you about God. Uh -huh. He has come and give us an understanding that we might know him that is true. See, he's instructing us about God. Jesus said, no man knows who the Father is but the Son. He to whom the Son wills to reveal him. See? So you need, our condition requires a mediator and an intercessor. If there's not another party in heaven that has identified with us, we're not talking about an angel can't do this. Not even an archangel can't do this. Not even a seraphim could do this. Huh? Or one of the living creatures. There has to be a glorified man yeah. in heaven or we're not going to get there. Amen. Yes, it does bother me that more is not said about this. But that's, that's why I've decided we're going to, we'll say something about yeah. it. Let it be made known. So you have to be taught. You have to be led. If you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. If you're led by the Spirit, He'll teach you to mortify the deeds of the body. Romans 8, 14. See? This, the fact that you have to be led, you have to be led. Nobody's going to stumble into heaven. Believe me, no one's going to stumble into heaven. No one's just going to wander up and find, find, there he is. You've got to have a mediator. 
and you've got to have an intercessor, someone working on the other end. And you need, you need to be strengthened. Your strength dissipates. And so who's going to strengthen you? Now, if you've ever tried to strengthen someone, you know that it's not all that easy. And if it was just, if it was just, we were just dependent on one another to strengthen one another, we'd all be in bad shape yeah, yeah. because we're not with each other all the time, see? <laughs> we're seasonally with each other. So we need to be strengthened. Paul prayed that you may be strengthened with might by spirit of the inner man so Christ can dwell in your heart. Yeah. By faith. Well, I thought you just received Jesus into your heart. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Oh, is that right? Is that right? Where is that ever taught in Scripture? You need this, this explicit teaching in Ephesians 3, 16 and 7, that before Christ can dwell, that means he comes to stay, you have to be strengthened with might by the Holy Spirit. Just see, this is just a bunch of hokum. Mm -hmm. Just bow your head and invite Christ into your heart. Sounds nice, mm -hmm. but it's a toy of it's a ploy of Satan. Mm -hmm. It's not true. You've got to have a mediator. Yeah, amen. Someone's got to send you somebody. Someone's got to send God. Someone has to send someone to preach to you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Someone's got to open up your heart. Someone's got to give you repentance. Someone's got to convince you of sin, rises, and judgment. See, so, and it, that's the mediator. That's why, you, yeah. that's why you have him. That's why he's there. Mm -hmm. And you have to be perfected. God's not glorified by half-done work. Yeah, right. Some might say, well, I'm making, he's making a lot of progress. That's, that's nice. We're for making progress. But we're to perfect holiness in the fear of the Lord. See, there's perfection is required. You say, what do you mean by perfection? I mean just that, perfection. Yeah. Amen. So I don't think I can do it. Well, God said to do it, which means you can do it. Yeah. There's resources to do it. Amen. But you've got to get to work on it. Right. And when you get to work on it, God will join the work. Yes. After you have suffered a while, establish, strengthen, settle, perfect. Mm -hmm. First Peter 5.10, perfect you, see. But he won't, he won't do that without this mediator and intercessor. And you need to be established. If it's easy for you to be blown about, you know, and have people change your mind and stuff, if this is easy to have, this has got to stop. You can't continue in this in this state. You just, you just can't. Uh -huh. You've got to be established. And you can't do it yourself. So God establishes you. Yeah, amen. Amen. As it says in First Peter 5.10, He'll establish you. Mm -hmm. Romans 16.25 says He'll establish you, see. But He's going to establish you because of what Jesus did, not because of what you did. Yeah. I'm getting out at the root level now. And you've got to be kept from evil. You're not, uh, unless something really unusual has happened to you, you're not, you're not smart enough to know all the ploys of Satan. Yes, that's, we, we'd like that to be that way. But listen, 2 Thessalonians 3.3. 3. Now this is all, it's, I'm establishing the need for a mediator and an intercessor. Second Thessalonians 3.3 3, The Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Well, there you are. Why, why is he going to establish you and keep you from evil? Is it because of what he thinks of you? It's because of Jesus and his mediation and intercession. If Jesus was to quit mediating, and quit interceding, you would not be kept. Yeah, right. You would not be strengthened. You would not be established. It's because of what Jesus is doing at the right hand of God. Yes. If you're established, that's why. Yeah, that's right. He's devoted to that. And he'll keep you from evil. And he'll, as Jude 1.24 says, keep you from falling. 
for God to keep her from falling, it's not just because you have the right label. He keeps you from falling because you have a representative yes. at his right hand, a mediator and an intercessor who's pleading your case. Now the avenue by which all of this is accessed is your faith. Yes. Your faith is what accesses all this. He purifies your heart, he does, through your faith. That's your key, your faith. That's the eye that sees what God has. It's a hand that gets a hold of what God has for you through your faith. We're justified by faith <laughs> and have peace with God. See, it's your faith. Your faith gets hold of that. Your faith gets hold of what Jesus is doing in your behalf. Uh -huh. We, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness. That is, we... We will be the first to tell you we have not yet apprehended. I've not yet apprehended that for which I have been apprehended. We're the f be the first to tell you that. But we're looking forward to a cessation of that incomplete status. Yeah, we by faith are waiting for the hope yeah. of righteousness. That's 100 percent righteousness. What's going to keep, what's going to make that hope carry you through? It's the mediator and the intercessor. When it comes down to the bottom line, the provisions that are for you are maintained by the mediator and the intercessor. The mediator makes sure it gets from heaven to you. And that your prayers get from you to God. The intercessor pleads your case when there's just reason for God to reject you. Uh -huh. yeah. Just like Moses. Uh, you know, remember, I, I died. It's yeah. because, remember I said that the factors you've got in you that can't enter into heaven, that has created a rather complicated situation that can only be resolved in heaven. It can't be resolved on the earth end. It's got to be resolved in heaven because God knows that to be saved, you must have an uninterrupted communion with heaven. It's, yeah. This is, uh -huh. you just can't get there if this isn't, doesn't happen. Yeah. And you're not capable of doing that. So we have a mediator and intercessor in heaven, and we got even an intercessor inside of you. The Holy Spirit intercedes for you. See, that's that is because of our current condition requires all of this assistance, heavenly assistance. And uh, so we don't glory you can't glory in yourself. If you've made progress, it's like almost like a so what situation. You've made it by the grace of God. If, you, if you're better or you've worked harder, it's by the grace of God. And yeah. why did you get the grace of God? Because you asked for it? Well, you did ask for it, but it's because of the mediator and the intercessor. Listen, right. some of the ancients wanted what you got, yes. but they didn't get it. Yeah. It wasn't time yet. Yeah. I can only imagine what David would have been if he was born in the new cover. Oh, I could only imagine. They didn't have an intercessor like we have. That's why all the promises given to them, with very few exceptions, all had to do with life on earth. Life on immortality brought to light by the gospel when the, we entered into the reign of the, of the, of the Lord's Christ. When you get to, to the bottom line, it's Christ. <laughs> now here's some ongoing ministries, ongoing activities, that require a mediator and an intercessor. We are on a pilgrimage. We're on the move. Being, a, being in a, a quote, Christian is not a static experience where you just stay located here and that's all there is to it. It's, it's not, not that at all. We're on a pilgrimage. We're on a journey. And this journey is lengthy enough that we've got to have somebody in heaven who will mediate the new covenant and see to it that we get the benefits of it. Sometimes when you need it the worst, you're aware of it the least. So this ain't got to be driven from heaven. It's got to be yeah. driven from heaven. Yeah. 
That's why I mediate our intercessors and says we're on a pilgrimage. I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts that war against the soul. Now about all you can really do about that is really want to do this. And when you really want to do this, the mediator <laughs> gets the resources to you. <laughs> but if you don't want to do it, you will not get the resources. Amen. I think this needs to be plain to people. See, people think I made a mistake. No, you didn't make a mistake. You stopped wanting what God gave. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. yep. The hungry and thirsty will be filled. Yeah. But they're the only ones that will be filled. Right. And when they're filled, it's because of the activity of the mediator and the intercessor. We are sojourning. That's right. And we, we don't, it's an, another view of pilgrimage, sojourning, we're, we're going through hostile territory. Yeah. And so we need someone to protect us mm -hmm. in heaven. And that's what the mediator and the intercessor, that's what he's doing. We're growing. See, I'm saying these are ongoing. None of these things I've mentioned so far, the pilgrimage and soul journey, none of these are static or stale. They're, they're progressive. They're, they're not only moving along, they're increasing as they move along. Amen. Another one is growing. See, we're growing up into Christ in all things, Ephesians 4.15. That's an ongoing... You can't make yourself grow. Yeah. If a, a, a young child is short and he wishes he was tall, he can get off in a corner and wish he was tall and what he, he wouldn't get any taller. There are some people that wish they were godly. And they're wishing like a midget in a corner wishing he was tall. You've got to have somebody in heaven to underwrite that work. Amen. And praise God, we do. We do have someone. We're growing. And we're being changed. See, we're in a state of change, upward change. Our, our outward man is deteriorating. But our inner man, the part that's born again, is advancing. Mm -hmm. And we're being changed from glory to glory. Yeah. One version has it right, that when one increasing stage of glory to another, it, it, it go further and higher. Now this process of being changed, this can't depend solely on what you do. This has got to be something that's undergirded by a, min by a ministry in heaven that's consistent. In fact, if you have at some time blundered, and then, by the grace of God, you recuperated. It was because of the mediator. I have prayed for you. Right? What Jesus said to Peter, I prayed for you that your faith fail not. Your faith would have failed from one blunder if a mediator and intercessor wasn't, wasn't doing the work there. And our adversary is seeking him and may devour. He's a very active, he's walking to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. So if he catches you in an off moment, mm -hmm. you're devourable yeah, that's right. if you take the mediator out of the picture. Yeah. But the mediator can call a halt to Satan's activities. Yeah. He can say, let him alone. Mm -hmm. <coughs> he can say, you can't, like God told Satan, you can't touch Job. You could take everything he had, but he couldn't put a finger on Job. Right. And he said, oh, I'll, I'll let you touch what he had, but you can't take his life. Yeah. See, God has this kind of power in our brethren. He has this kind of power, and it's put into force by the mediator. You, you can't activate this power. Yeah. It's the intercessor of the mediator that yeah. makes it practical and gets, gets the strength to you that is needed. The time of faith is, a, is a, actually an interim period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Time commencing when you're born again until you die is an interim period in which you're getting ready to move, move to glory. Yeah. During this interim period, <laughs> you've got to have some divine support. Yeah. Something has to undergird you 
It can't be you. It can't be anything from this world. It can't even be a group of Christian people. They can't, they can't do this themselves. You've got to have a mediator and an intercessor in heaven to undergird you through this interim period. And if you make it, and it's a, my prayer and desire that you do, at the end you will give every ounce of glory to God. You will say salvation is of the Lord, and part of salvation is Jesus' mediation and intercession. That's an integral part of salvation, and thank God it is. <coughs> the work of salvation has commenced, but it's not finished yet. But the mediator will keep the supplies coming. The mediator will make sure your petitions yeah. are presented to the Father. Mm -hmm. The intercessor, when there's a thousand reasons why you have failed, mm -hmm. the intercessor will step up and say, he's one of mine. Yeah. Yeah. My blood was shed for him. Yeah. And he believes on you, Father. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus prayed for Peter. Mm -hmm. He will for you, too. Amen. 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 So I trust that you're able to uh, see through some, some of my pr bit clumsy expressions, but that we have a mediator and an intercessor yeah. because we need them. We, yes. we need yeah. those offices. Yes. We right. need them sorely. And the longer you're in Christ, the more you can see, boy. So when you make it through a day, you know, relatively unscathed, you give thanks to God. Amen. Because heaven helped you get through the day, see. Yes. I remember a, a testimony Brother Bob gave one time. I never forgot it. He had a really a good day, and he was rejoicing. What a good day he'd had. He said, it seemed like he heard a voice, an angel saying to him, you ought to have seen what we had to go through so you'd have a good day. Yeah. That's true of you, brethren. Yeah. If you've been successful today, you give thanks to God. Amen. Because the Lord Jesus has carried you through with his mediation yeah. and his intercession. What valuable yes. ministries they are. <laughs> well, the Justin has our exhortation.